today, building a personal brand, um, I think particularly COVID gave it a big sort of flip um, in terms of how not just uh, it was your business that was important, but you as a person and you know what you stood for and uh, what you believed in uh, could come forward. So, and uh, that is where, uh, you know, we kept this session, which is really to how to build that personal brand and bring forward something that really matters to you and you're passionate about. Um, so, Dolly, we've been seeing your videos for the longest time. I know you were one of the earliest influencers in India. And, um, uh, you know, you've sort of went forward capturing Delhi, capturing a lot of, uh, you know, Honestly, I, if I remember right, you were probably my first alternative to television when I started watching you on the mobile. And uh, I think from there, this industry of influencers has gone, it, it has built further and, you know, uh, people have created all kinds of content to the point, you know, where there's a flood of content, you know, you really don't know what all to consume. So what got you started into, uh, you know, becoming an influencer. And I don't think that word also existed even at that point. They were more like content creation that was just being experimented uh, through online. So, you know, you've, you've been a veteran now, so to say, in this industry. So, um, therefore, um, you know, what, what is your opinion about influencer back then and now? Wow, so much for content creation. Doesn't even know how to switch on a mic. <laughs> Uh, but great question. Thank you. And yeah, I do feel like a veteran now that I look at content these days. I'm like, my goodness, I'm so clueless at what's happening. <laughs> I feel so out of touch sometimes. It's also the age, but we'll keep that on the side. Um, I think, you know, I really have seen it uh, really become something as a field, as, as a genre of... Uh, you know, profession. And there was a time when we started doing it, we couldn't even explain it to our parents as to what we were up to. Uh, and how do we, you know, plan to make money and all those things. It was really extremely frustrating and confusing. Um, but at the same time, I think I knew that content and I think our generation knew that content was the way to go just because we had just started to get stuck to our phones a lot more. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of meme culture and, you know, you were watching, um, you were just doing photos and, you know, reading memes. But I think slowly and very, very swiftly, actually, it's turned into videos. Yes. Um, and I didn't plan to do too much of that. I think there was always this, this want to get, like, perform in some way or the other. And I think I kind of, you know, my passion was fashion at that point. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll talk about fashion. I'll write a blog. Uh, I'll probably make some videos on it. But that was, that was it. Uh, I think comedy to me happened very accidentally. So I give the credit to God. <laughs> um, but uh, it's been really fun. Uh, I think, you know, as it has progressed, I have really enjoyed the time being in this profession and how it has flourished in literally no time. Uh, in front of us, we've had, we've seen such amazing people and young talent come up and show whatever they're good at. I think it's so democratic. Um, you know, it feels so good to see, especially in COVID, like you mentioned, there were so many young, talented creators from all over the country or the world. You know, we have seen people in villages doing some amazing dance choreographies or making some sort of food, traveling the world or even the richest talking about their lives. I think it's just opened the world in a, lo in a lot more ways. Uh, you know, we've seen Karima literally start her career on a rant video uh, pretty much that went viral and we all resonated with it. So I think it's, it's been fun. Um, there's a lot of changes that have happened from when we started and now, uh, but I think it's overall very exciting and challenging. Yes, indeed it is. And uh, and it's it's become probably one industry that I have also seen growing the fastest. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no barriers to entry. Anybody just pick up the phone and start creating it. And you'll read somewhere. But how competitive has the industry become now? So I'll, if you want to take this. Uh, uh, I do believe that, you know, with the number of people who are creating content now, uh, there is definitely like... Um, a lot of competition, at least that's what we've noticed. And mainly because, you know, as Dolly said, that till like five years ago, people didn't even know social media, kya hai? Mere to matlab, family mein log abhi bhi hai, are you financially stable? And I'm like, more or less, yeah. Like, so I feel like, yeah, given that uh, brands and a lot of like um, marketing agencies have discovered that, you know, sometimes hiring content creators as marketing 
um, faces of like promoting a particular product or something w uh, works for the best when it comes to reaching a certain audience without any interruptions. You know, like like somebody explained it to me that unlike YouTube ads that you can skip, you can't really skip a creator's brand plug. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, using them as online billboards works out for the best. And given the number of people who are actually making content because it's finally started getting recognition as a profession, you know, and people have started earning money and creating an entire life and career out of it. Yeah, I mean, definitely competition has spiked. And, you know, uh, from the day when you started creating content to now, what difference have you found in terms of, not just from a financial standpoint, I know commercially, yeah. of course, it's now much more lucrative to be a yeah. influencer than what it used to be. Right. But overall, in terms of the quality of content, in terms of, you know, the brand associations that you do, and also, um, you know, to be able to deliver mm. to that association, yeah. uh, to help them get the right impact for the brand. Yeah. I feel like the algorithm definitely has become a lot more complicated. Things were very simple when we started. It was photo, video, and maybe story, which also came much later. But now, yeah, there were no reels, exactly. So now there are too many buckets to fill. The algorithm is always working against you. I don't know what drug is it on, to be honest. Like, I think over time it's just confused us. Um, and I feel like... Over time, you know, because of the opportunity that social media gives you and the democracy, you know, the, the way it democratizes people to showcase their talent, there's been so much talent and so much unique content that one has seen that, you know, you, you, your audience is not, um, it's like the audience has also evolved. So unless you feed them something interesting, something very true to your personality, your voice, they are not buying it. So I feel like that way the competition is, and, and the way creation has become like, it's, you, you can't just like whip your phone out and make about just anything, you know, sometimes it requires thought, unless you're going down a different path, you know, like hate mongering, for example, is a great way to earn views. I mean, if you're taking that route, well, good luck to you. But like, if you actually want to showcase your talent, yeah, you've got to pay attention. Things are competitive and... You can't fool the audience anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, uh, coming to you, Karima. How how did you get started in in the world of influencer? You know, was it something um, that you had premeditated in terms of this is what you wanted to do, or it just came to happen? Like she said that you know God gave her comedy. <laughs> No, I did not plan anything. I wanted to be a journalist or do my masters in English and maybe write. So that aspect I feel like I've still incorporated in content but there was no plan like Dolly was saying in in COVID a lot of people started using their phones a lot and then even I I think started consuming content a lot more during COVID when we were I mean spending a lot of digital time and then there was just this whole crop of influencers I think who came up and comedy was something that was resonating with people a lot because obviously it was tough times and whoever could was finding ways to laugh. So that way I think I got, I don't want to say lucky, but like pe people were willing to do that and consume that content. So that's how it happened. There was no premeditated plan at all. Honestly, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that you could earn money off it. Yeah. I, I had no idea. Like I still... None of us knew, of us knew I think yeah. initially what it could do for our lives. And I mean, I saw like you guys and a bunch of other people who also started with you. And then I was like, oh, this is like a real thing that they're doing that I could also perhaps do. <laughs> so that was my only plan, I'll be real with you. <laughs> well, that's as good a plan as I mean, <laughs> right? Okay, uh, so, you know, coming down to it uh, today, if, uh, let's say, if in, a, in this room, some people want to think of uh, a career as an influencer, so what, what are gonna be your suggestions to them? you know, in terms of how, how do they have a, a more professional business model um, to be a good influencer, you know, how can they make money out of it? And also at the same time to be able to create something, you know, which is differentiated because as we were saying earlier that there's, there's the whole load of influencers and content creators today out there. So if you really want to make a difference, then, you know, in today's world, how would you be a good influencer? Um, 
see, I think to start, I think a lot of people, you know, message me also that, you know, I want to start this, but I don't know how to. I think that question should not even be there, given the way you were saying there's no barriers anymore. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can literally just pick up your phone, shoot a video, whatever you want to showcase, and put it out there. So I think that fear has to really leave. I think it's it's now we're it's 2024. Do whatever you want to do, and I think if you want to take a chance with content, give yourself six months and see where it goes. Right, like don't feel like a lot of. Um, I think what happens is because you know you see a lot of reels or videos or YouTube videos going viral in in a second. And you keep thinking, and especially I feel like the newcomers, they feel like, oh, mera viral kyun nahi ho ra? Or mera ek video viral ho gaya tha, but now none of them are going that way. Um, I feel like there's no recipe or formula to it anyway, so don't be so hard on yourself. That's one thing. Um, now, another thing about turning it into, like, or just being professionally aware, I think it's, it's better. It's great to first talk to your peers. I feel like there is competition, but you should also have some friends in the industry so you can just vent and talk and discuss and learn from each other. I think it's very important, especially in an industry um, so unstable in that sense. Um, and I think, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of ways you can learn about how to make money on it. But I think more than anything, um, it's to always put your audience first before your money and everything else. Because I always feel that that audience is literally your, uh, yeah, the, the driving force, the treasure, everything. And today, if you want to make a brand video, if they don't watch it, then there's no point, right? So you have to always prioritize your audience. What is it that they are enjoying? What is it that you are also enjoying? What do you want to make? Um, and I think, like you asked, how do you differentiate yourself? This is one thing I always tell people is up. Because, you know, there's a lot of trends going on. And everybody wants to hop on them. Music is, you know, going viral. So you want to also use the same song. Uh, and that's okay. I do that all the time. That's also a learning that I have made. But I feel like there's, there should be, if you're doing a bunch of those trending things, either find a way to make it different, give it your own twist, or do a bunch of those, but then do some original content, which is only you. Which, if I see tomorrow that, oh, oh, I, I can see this video, this is Riyaki video, hai, you know, because it's my Riyaka flavor. Hai. Or now, whatever that flavor is, it could be anything. But that differentiates you from the rest of the billion <laughs> influencers at this point. You know, we were watching, we are reading that meme the other day, that there are influencers and influence ho kon rahe. <laughs> So, if you really want to influence, I think, yeah, you have to have some sort of a unique voice. Uh, I think that's very important. And I think uh, also there's no pressure. Take your time to find that voice. It's fine. But uh, yeah, don't feel don't feel pressured because I feel like this this industry is very like you really get insecure, you get competitive, so it's it's very important to hold your head like in the right place. But every industry is like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I have one more point to add to that, which is something that you know we were never told or taught, or it wasn't normalized for us when we started out. That please don't be shy. Don't be shy treating uh, content creation as a as a business in its own capacity. You know, if if that means you have to hire people, align with agencies where your clauses are being provided a certain kind of production support or whatever support you need. Um, don't hesitate in doing that. I feel like it's been too unstructured for far too long. Yeah. And now it's not um, the mystique or whatever. It, I, I feel like it is a business after all. And I've noticed personally that a lot of people who go all guns blazing with a lot of like um, production things taken care of or a lot of back end things streamlined have a very high chance of being able to be consistent and you know have quality control over the kind of content they're putting out which can also add value to you know um, the work you do and the audience you garner so yeah i mean you please treat it like a full blown business if that means investing money in it yeah more power to but you i thought you anyway had to invest initially right just to put make your videos go viral not really no viral is the algorithm yeah, <laughs> I don't think, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, think any video that has been boosted has ever gone. Yeah, by seriously, <laughs> it's never gotten any shares. I feel like a lot of virality organically happens. If you want to boost it and all, but uska bhi panga hai na, ki matlab, then Instagram stunts your reach after three days. So do it at your own risk. Yeah. Sure. 
Uh, so, you know, uh, Karina, I would, in fact, all of you can answer this, is that do you think for influencers, OTT or, uh, you know, going to Bollywood is almost like a natural progression? Is it something that everybody would, at some point of time, look at doing as an influencer? Particularly if you are an entertainment influencer. Yeah. I, I don't think You've it's been a, doing stuff with Masaba as well, so... I've tried acting now. I don't think it's a natural next step. I don't think it came, like, very naturally to me either. It was the first day when I went on set, I was not aware that I was not supposed to make eye contact with the camera. Because that's what I used to do, right? And as I was breaking fourth wall all the time, I did not understand what continuity was. I did not understand you couldn't move your ring from one finger to the other because it would be a problem. And like how editing works when, because you're like, you remove every breath that is unfunny and you go over it, right? By the end of that editing process, you hate yourself also. But then this was so different. And I think it's a completely different craft that I would have, I still feel like I'm not that great at. Like I have played characters that I feel like are quite similar to me only um, and similar to the characters that I have portrayed. But I don't think it's a natural next step. Of course, I do think there are a lot of creators who have a natural inkling towards it and maybe they didn't pursue it because it wasn't as accessible. And after you become a creator, of course, you're put on the map. A lot of people notice you for your expressions and your... I'm sure there are overlapping things in that Venn diagram of acting and content. Um, and if, if you fall in that bracket and if you manage to train yourself and work on it, then I think you can do it. And you guys have done it. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's like completely like a natural next step either. I think they're very different also. Sure. Um, we're happy to take some questions also from the audience and there are quite a few people who want to ask. Okay. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Please pass the mic here. So, you know, in the meantime, as the mic comes, uh, you, can you give us a sense of the commerce as an influencer? You know, what kind of money do influencers really make and, you know, what kind of inexpense uh, do you really have? What kind of teams do you size do you really have? So... Um, if you can, so today if somebody wants to do a startup as an influencer, they should get a good idea out of it. I think, see, first of all, it's very difficult to um, start with that thought. I feel like uh, as much as you want to treat it as a business, I think beginning may there is a period you'd want to just give it to that content and build that page up. Um, <laughs> you know, it's very difficult. There is good money in it, but the, the good money comes after a period of time where you've already established yourself, yeah. it's been years, or at least that happened in our case, yeah. maybe it's yeah. different now. Um, you know, uh, there is also, I feel, in terms of teams and all those things, it's, uh, there's no way to really say that if you keep this like this, you keep so perfect, or so. I feel like it depends on what you need. Like Shivani said, if you need three people in your team, one for this, one for that, one for this, Please, go ahead, get that help if you can afford it. Uh, in my case, I am someone who's... It's so hard to please in that sense that I am always like, Ari, mai kar leti you, you know? So I'm still doing most of the work myself and I have an agency. So it really depends. And I've met people who have, you know, who are big content creators, have like teams of like 15, 15 people. So it completely depends on where you want to go with it. What is the direction? What kind of content are you making? Does it require a lot of production? Does it not require... It totally depends on that. And I think even the money then, you know, kind of then what are your profits? If you're putting a lot in production, sometimes I've put half the money in just making the video, then it's not as actually great than I would have, you know, enjoyed doing a one camera, just say a monologue. So so it all depends and it's, it's such a, uh, I think money is there, but it's also because it's still like, it's very unstable in that sense. We have seasons like every, every other industry. So, um, I feel like there is good money and I, if somebody wants to come into this business because of that, please, you're welcome because right now it's booming. <laughs> so come in. Uh, but be aware that, you know, it doesn't happen instantly and it takes a little bit of time for you to then, there will be a little bit of suffering there. Ki yaar, can, you know, you'll have to be consistent. You'll have to put, make up, make enough content and put it as a portfolio for the brands to be able to even see. Right. Yeah. So when you say a few years, how many years do you mean? 
it can be now it takes months. too much uh, yeah or it can be when we forever. started yeah. yeah i'll be real with you like it's good money and it started fast for me yeah and even like say investing in production stuff like, by the time i think i started people had already started treating it like an actual shoot even if yeah. you were shooting just a reel mm-hmm. uh but that way it's quite lucrative also i've never had any other job uh, cuz i started this right like in my third year of college and by then my parents were like now figure it out cuz we can't <laughs> we can't do more now so then I, i was i think in my first month uh, the first brand deal i ever did was with terribly tiny tales and i did a reel it was for 5k but the progress that keeps going on like then it would jump to a 30 and then it keeps progressing like that so that way but then your your engagement your numbers also have to show they, that yeah, yeah, that 100% yeah that 100% also has to go up as long as i feel like a brand sees that the voice that everyone keeps yeah. talking about that uniqueness to you because content i also feel like everybody can like as much as it is competitive i also think everybody has a place for them because nobody can yeah. replicate the other person completely so that way if a brand likes that voice in you they will come back um as long as you keep yapping on the internet <laughs> yes please. yeah hi i'm vanya goel and uh, thank you for keeping all of us entertained <laughs> so i think uh, the part time of each and every one uh, is to scroll up the reels even before we sleep at night we scroll up the reels and obviously you all show up in one or the third or the fifth reel every time we scroll up so thank you for doing that so the questions that i wanted to ask you is uh, i am myself an aspiring linkedin influencer i would say so i have been recently approached for some collabs so what do you take care of or consider while doing any sort of paid or unpaid collabs or uh, so just tips for the same what all would you take care of while uh, doing any sort of paid or unpaid collabs um uh, so uh, first and foremost obviously commercials you know in case it's it's not a barter and if it's a paid collab um don't sell yourself sh- short but don't uh, oversell yourself also i mean you need to know what your market value like for the page that you have with the number of followers or engagement is um in case there is not enough uh, you know credibility that you have have built as a content creator it it is not a bad idea to start with barters because sometimes to populate your page with you know brand deals is a good template to then attract more like you know more commercial work um as far as the mandates for doing a brand deal is concerned a lot of brands you know these days have noticed want to push content on the pages of content creators as native ads it's like um there was still scope for us to have a content vi- like a, a brand video with actual content in it now because of the um, watch duration or whatever you know the average watch time and all these statistics that are available like a lot of brands want you to just create content which is just around the brand video S- exactly so um, don't feel um, uh, guilty about pushing back a little bit you know like ultimately your audience is not here to watch um, uh, something something's apple cider vinegar on your page they are here to watch you and through the course of them watching the video that you've made you can plug in the apple cider vinegar if you want so yeah that's one very big mandate secondly um, how many brand plugs do you want to place so yeah i feel like these conversations you get better at it with time but yeah just um, try conveying it to the brand that it can't just be an ad like it will not work because if it doesn't work then the onus of the views not showing up will also be on you so you know like there's a lot of like um yeah i mean we've learned it over the course of time but yeah these are the main things okay more questions in the house yes please but quick ones huh if we want three questions more but we need to go very quick on these <laughs> all right i already know the answer but just a quick question no, from all of us but uh, 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 i already have a um, follow up question as well all right so instagram or youtube youtube when i watch it instagram when i make it <laughs> all right so any suggestion from your side for specifically for content creators who are you know switching their platform from instagram to youtube 
Uh, now, considering that the content which you post on Instagram gets copyright issues on YouTube, so how to do that? I think, see, all you'll need to figure, and this is something even I uh, have difficulties with because YouTube, especially the short form content is still coming around and they do have very strict copyright, um, you know, um, rules and regulations that you have to keep in mind. So I think all you can do is somehow try and see if you can, either you repost without any music or something that can be copyrighted, or you use certain music for YouTube version of your video, you use certain music which is copyright free. Like you'll have to find your way through these loopholes, you know, and, and understand that platform also just in the way you understand Instagram. Okay, Instagram pe sab chalta hai. and honestly Instagram will also slowly yeah. start putting things. So we'll all have to learn and I think this is the challenge in this job that every time, every few months something new has come up. So right. you just need to figure it out. You know, so just learn about those rules and regulations. What are they on YouTube? How does the platform work? And somehow make sure that you are creating or tweaking your content to that. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. The, the gentleman behind you, please. Hi guys. So this is Rishabh. I'm the founder and CEO of this company called Polar Turn. I'm building the next gen social media app for travelers. So I have a question for you guys. Uh, do you think if there would be like in your respective niches, whatever content you are creating, if there comes up a new platform, let's say something like an Instagram, would you want to move your user base to a new forum altogether or would just want to stay, you know, restricted to whatever, you know, platforms you've been curating content on? Another platform. Yeah. So that's precisely <laughs> what I'm building. Yeah. I mean, I think we'll have to. We'll have to. <laughs> yeah. If you start popping, right. Rishab, I feel like we will all. Yeah. Pop. We'll all be like forced guided. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll have to change. See, content creators are going to be wherever the audience yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. When TikTok came, we all had to try and oh, jump onto favorite. it. Yeah. We, we were thankful that somehow it got banned because we were already established on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Feeling bad for the creators who yeah, yeah. were doing it's actually like, better on TikTok. You know, so these apps, uh, especially, it feels so volatile working on yeah. the internet because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It's not in your hands. Your workplace is not in your hands. Yeah. All you can you do is create. To. So if tomorrow Instagram, or, you know, shuts, or if there's another bigger app yeah. With, yeah. where you feel like, yeah. oh, I have to cash on this, yeah. you'll have to go. Yeah. And that's literally with, I think, our lives and our professions, that's the biggest challenge is you have to keep changing, keep moving with whatever the flow is. So you guys wouldn't be like really complacent with, okay, we're well established here, let's say on a Not YouTube Not at all. I feel like the job of a content creator or an influencer is to create content. Yeah, Now you do it on Insta, pe karo, TikTok. And where will you get the benefit? If brands are telling us to move there or yeah. if we feel like, oh my God, too many people have moved yeah. from Instagram to there, the audience or creators, we'll also be forced to yeah. kind of do that. You so know? I might reach out to you soon. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. Get the three people of you first. Yeah. Yeah. One last question. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, platforms also have a shelf life like us. <laughs> Like Vine started, then Vines yeah. went to yeah. YouTube, yeah. then YouTubers came to Reels, TikTok, yeah. all these cross meddling to keeps happening. 100%. Eventually all the platforms also start to, like people start wanting something new, like yeah. they want some content. 100%. So we'll awesome. come to you. 100%. Looking forward. Thank you so much, guys. We'll take one there last at the back, question. I feel like yeah, <laughs> the person okay, has been on, trying to on. raise her hand. Yeah, go on. Can yeah. you speak loudly? Sorry, can't hear you. Ah, okay. Let the Wait mic for the mic to reach you. Yeah. Hello, hi. My name is Rishika and I'm with Friends Square. We're an employee well-being company, right? So for structures, we figured out how to do and how to give them the mental health support that they need. But as you all mentioned, your industry is well, very volatile. You all don't have structures that you're working in. So maybe what is something that you're doing or what is something that you expect from those around you to be able to support you in that case? So being in the kind of so workspace that you are, what are you doing to support your mental health perhaps? Or what uh, you're not doing or missing or the sources that can be provided to you? Uh, does that make sense? Okay. You're saying that you represent a company that has... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we do employ well-being solutions. We're right. called Friends Quest. So, oh. But we haven't able to reach people who are doing their own startups perhaps, right? right, right. Or who are working as freelancers. But that space still exists. So what yeah. could perhaps be a way to reach you? I feel like one of the biggest things that if you could provide us support in is maybe a consistent paycheck, you know, <laughs> <laughs> till 60 years of age, maybe promise of a structure. I don't know. I mean, as, as creators, I don't know what support can we seek from, you know, outside. 
बिकॉज वेन इट कम्स टू आर मेंटल हेल्थ वेन इट कम्स टू कंसिस्टेंसी वेन इट कम्स टू क्रिएटिविटी लाइक क्रिएटिविटी में आप क्या सपोर्ट दोगे यू कैन आई द गिव अस लाइक दैट चैट जी पी टी टू हेल्प पीपल क्रिएट स्क्रिप्ट बट डज दैट वर्क आई एम नॉट श्योर यू नो लाइक इफ आई लाइक गेट चैट जी पी टी टू राइट स्क्रिप्ट आई डोंट थिंक इट कैन रेप्लीकेट माई थॉट प्रोसेस सो I I I don't know. I mean, I feel like um, if you guys I, have I, a better, I yeah. I think see, I think for freelancers and everybody who's doing this kind of job, and especially alone, you know, you feel like a one person kind of doing everything. Um, you need a lot of support. <laughs> you need a lot of affirmations and like oh verbal support or like just being there because you know creators का क्या है कि सब कुछ खुद ही करना है most of the times. Uh, you have to create. You have to ideate. You have to write. or you to shoot you know um if you can if they can afford a team if if they're willing you know if there's some sort of support you can give in terms of creating whether it's an assistant a script writer whatever they particularly need because that's different from people to people and with your uh, you know industry i don't even know what is it that they need so i think that conversation first has to happen is it ki aapko chahiye kya because you are one person we have dealt with companies but you tell us what you want so i think that first has to happen i feel like some sort of therapy counseling maybe uh, uh, you know i feel like everywhere uh, mental health is just all of us i feel like we've lost our minds at this yeah. point yeah, you know no matter what healthy. you're doing in life um, so i think any sort of counseling or you know emotional help would be really really nice um, because kya hai ki if i say something bad to myself i can't go to the hr and be like maine apne aap ko galat bola hai please mujhe daat do you know there's no <laughs> there's no person really so i feel like anything that you feel like you you should ask them you know person to person i think because they're individuals their individuality and their individual needs um, might be different so i think first you communicate with them as to what they want but i feel like a lot of emotional support verbal support any particular um, production help or whatever in your industry whatever is it that they need uh, you know day to day basis i think it depends on that i'm talking about our field uh, production and assistants and managers and you know these are the people we need uh, and i think how we safeguard our mental health is therapy and our team just being like yeah let's do this and we're like okay let's do it love. That's great. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for that enlightening session. You know, a big round of appreciation for them for actually sharing the vagaries of build, being an influencer and building your own personal brand. Um, any final sort of, you know, uh, final line, final piece of advice you want to give? A very quick one. I would just say, don't sell your soul. I think it's so easy to do that. <laughs> and i'm sure i have also partially done that many times we've all sold our yeah. souls for work yeah in different ways there i always take you know what sharuk said once is mai 100 pratishat mein se 70 75 pratishat mai ab bech ke kaam karta hu aur 25 pratishat mai apne liye karta hu so i feel like even if there is a 25% left which you just do for your own heart and mind and everything that you want to create i think till the time you are justifying it no matter where you are in profession i feel like somewhere we all have to sell our souls so it's okay and i think one more advice that i'd like to add for kids you know because uh, uh, content creators are gen alpha gen z you know um please get an education do not compromise on education because you're making millions right now on instagram or youtube like please Just prioritize about to go get my master now nah. good girl seriously please very important it's a very unstructured short lived blip in the course of your professional journey sometimes content creation can be so yeah education bahut zaruri hai i think uh, that's very well said particularly for all the young folks who are you know being carried away by podcasts and so on i mean i have school going children and they're making podcasts with like, what are they making podcasts about <laughs> what have <laughs> you learned in life today i saw gr does get fun. ready with me by a child who's probably 6 her night routine get ready with me video I, I was like see, I was I don't even talk at that age like what are you I'd doing I'd eat I I I'd eat that content up I'm not going to lie I'm like, like I find it. it there are problems with it but I love maybe like mundane content is my favorite yeah. <laughs>